The unemployment rate now fell to 24% of the labor force in the fourth quarter of last year. This is down from 25.3% in the third quarter of 2010. Joining me now on the line to discuss this further is Loan Sharp, labor analyst at AdCorp. Loan, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, no surprise there, most of the investor community had hoped to see a softer unemployment number. We're sitting at 24%, as I mentioned, and this, of course, is due to much higher economic growth as well in the fourth quarter of last year. Well, there's a lot of magic in these numbers. Um, if you look at the underlying calculations of unemployment, if people remove themselves from the labor market for any reason, they become students or homemakers, or they become permanently discouraged about finding work, bizarrely that reduces the unemployment rate. And that's exactly what has happened uh, in the last quarter. So uh, it's not a positive story at all. Um, hundreds of thousands of people have opted to stay at home uh, rather than work, to become students rather than work, yeah. or to stop working or looking for work altogether. Where there has been a big boost in employment in the fourth quarter was in the government sector. There was a surprising boost to employment in the manufacturing sector, which doesn't square very well with our understanding of the RAND exchange rates and conditions around the world. But uh, this trend of government employment rising has been observed for very much the last 18 months and more. Mm. Uh, Lone, let's just drill into the other, the expanded definition of unemployment, which includes people who have stopped looking for work, as you were alluding to a little earlier. Uh, this number decreased to 35.8% from 36.4%. Does that basically fall in line with what uh, your sentiments are? Yes, very much so, um, because uh, that accounts only discouraged people. But I would argue that people who've opted to become students because they can't find work or people who've opted to stay at home, uh, mothers, working mothers staying at home instead, I would, opt that, uh, I would say, argue that they're very much discouraged as well. There's nothing positive in these numbers except a very unusual and strange uptick in manufacturing employment. Every other sector uh, is effectively flat or down apart from government. Uh, there's nothing in these figures to be uh, optimistic about. Mm. The South African economy's job creating power remains severely under strain. And uh, it's a pity that the uh, unemployment rate uh, doesn't reflect that. Mm. Well, then it's also quite interesting. I mean, looking at the manufacturing space, and one has to only look at the, the PMI, the sub-index, sub the employment index of the PMI number. It's still in contraction mode. Yes, it's slightly better, but it really doesn't fall in line with what we've seen um, on the unemployment front. And again, you also mentioned the strong RAND, because purely, uh, you know, surely a very strong RAND should result in more job losses. Uh, do you think that government is trying to make headway in this particular space? No, not at all. I mean, there's uh, a lot of talking going on and very little walking. Mm. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm quite dubious about these numbers. Remember, the quarterly labor force survey is derived from a sample of dwellings and households. So it's not a survey of business enterprises. So it really reflects only what people report themselves to be doing. Mm. So one of the consequences of that is that people report themselves to be in the informal sector involved in some or other activity and it doesn't feature in other employment statistics like the quarterly employment statistics due for release later this year so uh, uh, there's a huge lack of credibility around this data generally but i think what it does show is that uh, the economy is from a job creating perspective still very weak i don't at all understand the manufacturing results uh, there are no real government programs or initiatives that have become uh, underway over the last six months or so. Uh, no, not at all. I think we trace back these very poor employment figures yeah. to laws and regulations. In fact, mm. government is doing exactly the opposite of what is required, not freeing up the labor market, but actually burnishing it with, uh, burdening it really with, uh, with more and more restrictive yeah. laws. Well, Lone, uh, one of the other things you pointed out is that government is still increasing its employment base. So is this going to be a concern going forward? One only has to look at what happens in Europe and a, a bigger government, a bigger pool of, of people employed there can result in much higher expenses as well. Uh, do you think that we could fall into, in a trap or do you think government is just literally filling in those gaps? Uh, that's a fantastic question. I, I think uh, that's exactly what government is doing. They are uh, disappointed with the private sector's job-creating performance, 
they have now decided to create jobs themselves. And I think that's really what the new growth path released in December last year, or January this year rather, uh, reveals. Those five million jobs are not going to be jobs primarily in the private sector. Those are going to be jobs in the government sector. And uh, to my knowledge, parastatals, since the new growth path in January, have already been instructed to give back to the Department of Public Enterprises numbers of jobs that they're going to create. Yeah. So you could see ESCOM's employment rise from 45,000 to 65,000 in the next 12 months. You could see Transnet's rise by a further 20,000, Telcom by about 8,000. There's no question that this is part not only of a plan, but an announced policy of government. There's a, a major increase in government job creation coming.